bike sprints, running sprints, sprints with the barbell. They all end up in the same way, by collapsing on the ground, gasping for air, feeling nauseous and maybe even on the verge of throwing up. So why does this happen? Why do you feel so sick after short sprints? And what can you do about it? Let's dive into the science. Our body's energy currency is ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. When our muscles contract, they break down ATP into ADP and a phosphate group, releasing energy for muscle contraction. This ATP needs constant recycling to metabolic pathways that break down carbohydrates, fats, but also creatine phosphate. Here's an overview of the ATP producing pathways. We're focusing mainly on the anaerobic glycolytic system, the second one from the left on this graph. And this is key mostly for short sprints around 30 to 40 seconds uh, on the bike, for example, or uh, running or swimming. A study showed that about 60% of energy during a 30 second bike sprint comes from anaerobic sources. This means a large part of the energy that is actually needed during sprints is produced without any use of oxygen. So how does anaerobic breakdown of carbohydrates actually work? We call this glycolysis. Glucose, the simplest form of carbohydrates, break down into a molecule called pyruvate through glycolysis. Then the body decides what to do with this pyruvate. When there is oxygen available, it turns into acetylcoenzyme A, enters the citric acid, acid cycle in the mitochondria and produce a lot, produces a lot of ATP. Without oxygen, pyruvate turns into lactate and releases hydrogen ions, H+, remember that one closely, a process that we call lactic acid fermentation. And it also involves oxidation of NADH to NAD+. Lactic acid, it's, it's a weak acid. It quickly dissociates into lactate ions and hydrogen ions, these H plus ions. And this buildup of hydrogen ions is key because it can decrease the muscle and also the blood pH, leading to that sick feeling after a sprint. The body has a natural buffer system. We call this the bicarbonate buffer system. And it helps maintaining this pH balance, this very fine balance between 7.3 and 7.4. Why or how? By converting the excess hydrogen ions into carbon dioxide and water, which we then obviously exhale later on. However, intense exercise like bike sprints can completely overwhelm this system, dropping the blood pH and leading to this feeling of sickness and nausea. For instance, this interesting study showed that blood pH dropped as low as 7.0 after only one 30 second all out bike sprint test. This was in untrained people. Trained people have been shown to decrease their pH by six to 6.9, even 6.7, which is very, very low and completely out of homeostasis. This was done, as I said, by one 30 second bike sprint uh, called a Wingate test. Interestingly, bicarbonate, the molecule that buffers these H plus ions, was also depleted, while lactate obviously skyrocketed after exercise. So what can you do to improve the tolerance to sprints? First of all, there's simply training. Training regularly, you help your buffering system adapt and reduce sickness over time. Then we also have supplements. And basically there are two supplements that have been extensively studied and have been shown to enhance this buffering capacity. The first is sodium bicarbonate, commonly known as baking soda. Yes, this thing that you use to bake your cake. It is readily available, obviously, in most supermarkets. And when taken into the, in the right amounts, sodium bicarbonate can actually alkalize the blood, increase its ability to buffer these H plus ions. A cool study involving swimmers found that consuming 0.3 gram per kilogram body weight, that's quite a lot of uh, sodium bicarbonate, uh, shortly before the, the, the start of, of sprint interval training, significantly improved um, performance, improved also bicarbonate levels and reduced, and that's key, the drop in this blood pH. The supplement was taken approximately 60 minutes before they started exercising. 
It's important to note that sodium bicarbonate being very high in sodium can actually cause some gastrointestinal discomfort. If you are considering using this into, in a competitive setting, it's very wise to test this extensively during training, so before the, the, the actual exercise, and actually to assess the, the, the tolerance to this supplement. Another supplement that can actually help buffer these H plus ions inside the muscle is beta alanine. Maybe you've heard about this one as well. It's essential for making carnosine. the end uh, i hope you enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe we're really aiming for 5000 subscribers by the end of the year i hope to see you next time ciao